Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Going Places with Abu Maika. If this is your first time watching my videos, welcome to my channel. I talk about moving to Canada and living in Canada as an immigrant. Now, this video is about how you can build a credit score without a credit card, but getting the same kind of traction as somebody with a credit card. It's a little trick that I learned uh, that I want to share with you guys. I'm also going to talk about some of the other ways to build credit without having a credit card and the pros and cons of those. So you want to find out more about that, do stay tuned. Now I did an earlier video here, you can click the link above to learn more about how to build credit in Canada as a newcomer. Basically, you know, you need postpaid accounts, you need bills, and you need payments, okay? Uh, essentially, it's about borrowing money and paying it back. That's how you build credit. Now, credit cards are a very quick way to build credit. But a lot of people have concerns about resisting the temptation to overspend because it's easier generally to borrow money than it is to pay it back. So they then ask, hey, are there some other ways I can build a good credit history, credit score, credit profile in Canada without having a credit card? So I'm going to talk about some of those ways and then I'll talk about the trick. Now, the first way uh, to build credit without a credit card is you get what's called a credit builder loan. So a credit builder loan, uh, basically, I mean, the whole idea is you want to build credit. So you don't need the money. So what you do is you apply for a credit builder loan. And because you don't need the money, you're not given the money. It's just put in a secure account, which you can't access. You start making the payments regularly. And then, you know, once you pay the full amount, you get your money back. So that's it. And that then increases your credit score because you've borrowed money and you've paid it back. Um, I don't like the hassle of applying for loans, you know, and things like that. Going to the bank and saying, hey, I want this, I want that, I want that. Um, but that's, you know, one way of doing it. Second way of doing it is you apply for a personal loan, okay? So you go to the bank, you say, hey, I want to borrow $2,000 and I will pay it back after one year, okay? Now, the difference between this now and the first scenario is that this time you're actually getting the money. So most of the time it's like you actually need to spend it, right? Otherwise, you know, what's the point? You borrow money and then you're paying it back and then you're going to pay interest on top of that when you didn't actually need the money. Right. So this way is uh, probably, I mean, yeah, it's got its pros and cons. Yes, you're building credit without a credit card. But as a newcomer or as somebody with low credit or no credit history, you're trying to build credit. Um, this may be a little bit expensive because you, uh, your, what you call it, your interest rate might be high if you don't have a good like uh, credit history. Right. But that's another way you can build credit score. Third way is you can get a car loan, right? You can consider getting a car loan. Um, I don't recommend this because um, if you're getting, if you're trying to get an auto loan without a credit history, your interest rate is going to be very high. There are dealerships that will approve everybody. You know, I'm sure maybe those of you who've lived in Canada uh, will know, right? Who've looked at the car market, will see dealerships who advertise, we approve everybody. Right, car financing for everybody, low credit, no credit, bad credit, um, you know, any income accepted. We get everybody approved. Yes, they may get everybody approved, but hey, you don't want to be paying 15% on an auto loan, right? So yeah, you can get a you can get a car loan, but you know, the difference between one person and the other will be the interest rate. And if you are new, you don't have a you know a solid credit history you may get a very high interest rate on your car loan. So that's a very expensive way to do it. And you're doing it over a long period of time. Uh, the third way, this is for people who are already in Canada, you just repay an existing loan. So let's say like you've got a student loan, the moment you start paying it back, you know, you're already building credit. Um, now, the other way is um, you can become an authorized user on somebody else's credit card. So this particularly works uh, very well for couples, okay? So you're married, uh, you've got a partner, uh, and you don't want to have two credit cards. Like, you know, you don't want to have like sort of like two credit card applications. So what you do is 
let's say there's a husband and a wife and then one of them has a credit card and the other doesn't right uh what you can do is the one with the credit card just applies for the other spouse to be an authorized user of that card so whatever happens on that card affects both of you okay so if one messes it up it messes up credit for the other person okay so that requires a lot of discipline on the part of you know the authorized users on the card but that's another way you can build credit is if you're an authorized user on somebody else's credit card you know whatever happens on the card you know it affects the scores for both of you uh, rent payments are also a way of uh, increasing your credit score if your landlord reports your payment to credit agencies if they don't you can consider asking them hey you know i want to build credit i don't want a credit card but please can you report my rent payments to credit agents because most of us you know we, we always make sure we pay our rent on time right nobody wants to be affected um so those are some of the ways that you can build credit without a credit card now i'm going to talk about the credit card itself and the trick that i want to share with you guys now number one there's what's called the debt utilization ratio okay very important if you have a credit card um credit bureaus will rate you according to how much of your available credit you are using Right. So the more you use, uh, the lower your score will be because you don't want to like max out. So credit bureaus will punish somebody who maxes out a thousand dollar credit card because they're utilizing 100 uh, percent versus somebody who um, owes a thousand dollars. But on a three thousand dollar credit card, they're using like 33 percent. Right. So try to keep your utilization ratio below 30% for the best score. Uh, if you go above that, you know, your score may begin to go down. And it goes drastically down if you now go above 70%. Okay. So having talked about that, <clears throat> the other thing is also your credit history. Okay. If you want um, to have a good credit score, have credit accounts open for a longer period of time. If you have a credit card that you don't want to use instead of canceling it okay especially if it's a card with no annual fee just cut it up and throw it away okay the credit account is too open but you don't have the card you won't spend it but the fact that you've had the credit you know account open for a long period of time and it's in good standing because you don't owe anything on it right it's not in collections then that will help to increase your credit score okay now <clears throat> let me talk about the trick okay um i talked about the utilization ratio okay and i talked about the length of the credit history so what you do is you want to build a credit score but you don't want to have a credit card so here's what you do you apply for a credit card okay go to your bank say hey i want a credit card get whatever limit they give you right one thousand dollars five hundred dollars whatever right then set up a few pre-authorized payments on your credit card okay stuff that's in your budget already okay stuff that you know i will definitely pay this amount every month so for example you can put your internet payments there you can put your mobile plan there you can put your amazon subscription there your netflix your i don't know whatever other subscriptions you might have you can put your tenant insurance there you can put your car insurance there right stuff that you know uh you know you're gonna pay anyway so you put that on the credit card you cut it up then you throw it away okay that way uh your card is active <clears throat> you're using it and you're paying it off right so you've got those three things you've got credit accounts you've got bills and you've got payments and your credit score you know begins to go up but you don't have the actual physical card with you why because you've cut it up you've thrown it away you're not gonna spend you know money with it in a grocery store fast food or even online where you have to enter you know your card details because you're not going to be having the card so you're not going to know the security code the expiry date the card number and hey your card is valid for like what four or five years so really you know and you're making those fixed payments if you want to stop any payment you don't need the card right you just talk to the vendor and say hey you know i don't want to keep i don't want to pay this amount anymore right so you cancel and so so just make sure those pre-authorized payments are within like 30 percent of your available credit right and then every time you get a bill you're paying it off so 
banks are not going to punish you for cutting up the card and throwing it away. They're not going to know anyway. But your credit card is, is actually active and it's using and you're building traction just like somebody with a credit card, but you don't actually have one. Okay, so I hope you found this useful, guys. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, if you like to give it a thumbs up, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments below. And um, hey, thank you for all your subscriptions. Thank you for helping me cross a thousand subscribers. Big shout out to you guys. Really appreciate all the support and all the feedback. Uh, keep making some great videos. Hey, if you've got any video suggestions, again, hit them in the comment section below. And I will read, I read every comment. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.